Hi everyone, welcome to our discussion in science, technology, and society. In this video, I will be discussing uh, two topics. I decided to merge uh, the two topics because um, the discussion or the topics are just very short. So the first one or the first topic is about science education in the or in the Philippines. Now, to serve as a, a background, so the concept of science education. Now, science education focuses on three things. These are teaching, learning, and understanding science. Now, let's talk about the first one. Teaching science involves developing ways on how to effectively teach science. This means exploring pedagogical theories and models in helping teachers teach scientific concepts and processes effectively. So teaching science, the one in charge of this one, of course, are our teachers. Uh, science teachers from the elementary, uh, secondary, and even in the tertiary level. So as teachers, it is our task to um, develop ways, different strategies, so that I uh, will be able to deliver uh, science concepts and lessons to our students in the best possible way that we can. Next, we have learning science. So what do we mean by that? Learning science, on the other hand, includes both pedagogy and the most interesting aspect, which is helping students understand and love science. So. Um, as teachers teach science, um, we should make sure that uh, we are not just teaching and teaching and feeding students concept. Uh, we should make sure that uh, the end goal is for our students to learn, absorb those concepts, and eventually uh, students will be able to develop a certain love for science. Lastly, we have understanding science. So understanding science implies developing and applying science process skills and using science literacy in understanding the world and activities in everyday life. So understanding science means um, in the end, students or people will be able to uh, apply the learnings that you have gained in your day-to-day -day living. Next, we have science education in basic education. In basic education, science education helps students learn important concepts and facts that are related to everyday life, um, including important skills such as process skills, critical thinking skills, and life skills that are needed in coping up with daily life activities. So these are the set of skills uh, that you are expected to develop as you uh, journey in the field of science. Uh, science education also develops a positive attitude such as the love for knowledge, passion for innovative things, curiosity to study about nature, and creativity. So um, in schooling or in studying science, uh, these are uh, other um, attitudes that hopefully will be developed within uh, the students. Science education will develop a strong foundation for studying science and for considering science-related careers in the future. This is an investment for the country to develop a scientifically cultured and literate citizenry. So during your uh, basic education, elementary, junior high, senior high, uh, those will be the time that uh, you will be deciding as to what path or career that uh, you will be uh, focusing on in the future. So, um, at an early age, if you have an inclination in science, so um, tendency is you will pursue a career related to science. 
Next, we have science schools in the Philippines. One outstanding program for science education supported by the government is the establishment of science schools in various parts of the country. There are also several government programs implemented by the Department of Education and few private schools for science education. First one, I think you're familiar with this one. The Philippine Science High School System or the PSHSS. This is a government program for gifted students in the Philippines. It is a service institute of the Department of Science and Technology or the DOST, whose mandate is to offer free scholarship basis for secondary course, meaning uh, in junior high school, with special emphasis on subjects pertaining to the sciences, with the end view of preparing its students for a science career. So that is under Republic Act number 33, I mean 3661. The school maintains a dormitory for all its students. Since its inception, the PSHSS continues to pursue its vision to develop Filipino science scholars with scientific minds and passion for excellence. PSHS students have proven to be a beacon of excellence, courage, and hope for the country. They have brought honor to the Philippines through their exemplary achievements in various international competitions and research circles. When the students graduate from the school, they are expected to pursue degrees in science and technology at various colleges and universities locally or abroad. So again, I think you're familiar with this when we have uh, the Philippine science or the PhilSci, also known as PSI. We have uh, our own uh, Philippine Science High School in Region 8, which is located in uh, Palo, Leyte. So if you have like brothers and sisters, or if you know someone who is right now um, at their grade six level in the elementary. If you know someone who is gifted, who is intelligent or inclined in science and mathematics, you can tell them uh, to try to uh, take the exam uh, if they will be able to avail of the scholarship for the Philippine Science High School program. So um, they won't be paying any tuition fee. They are free of that. They have allowances, they have incentives, and they also have a dormitory for the students. So this is the Philippine Science High School, Eastern Visayas Campus. So again, uh, the PhilSci or um, the PSHS, uh, the school can be found or is located in, um, in the government center in Palo Leyte, just near Tacloban. Next, we have special science implementor elementary schools or the SSES project. Uh, the special science elementary schools project is in pursuance to that ed order number 73 series of 2008 and that ed order number 51 series of 2010. This project started in June 2007 with 57 identified elementary schools that participated or were identified as science elementary schools in the country. Since its inception, the number have grown to more than 60 schools nationwide. So not only do we have um, the Philippine Science High School, we also have uh, elementary schools, which focuses on the sciences. The SSES project aims to develop Filipino children equipped with the scientific and technological knowledge, skills, and values. Its mission is two. First one, provide a learning environment to science-inclined children through a special curriculum that recognizes the multiple intelligences of learners, meaning uh, their curriculum is different compared to those um, in the normal curriculum. Um, they focus more 
on science and mathematics. Um, another mission is to promote the development of lifelong learning skills and foster the holistic development of the learner. So um, even if they focus more on science and mathematics, of course, um, the whole show uh, the whole or the all of the aspects may be physical, mental, emotional, psychological aspects of the learner is also being developed. The subject science and health is taught in grade one with a longer time compared to other subjects. That's 70 minutes for grades one to three. That's one hour and 10 minutes. And 80 minutes for grades four to six. So that's one hour and 20 minutes. Meaning um, for the normal curriculum, they will, uh, they will only spend around 40 minutes to one hour. But here in the SSES, uh, they allocate more time. The curriculum also utilizes different instructional approaches that address the learning styles and needs of the learners, like the use of investigatory projects. So as early as elementary, they are already tasked to do research for their investigatory projects. Next, we have the Quezon City Regional Science High School. The school was established on September 17, 1967. Originally, it was named Quezon City Science High School. It was turned into a regional science high school for the National Capital Region in 1999. So this is in Quezon City in uh, NCR. The school was a product of a dream to establish a special science school for talented students in science and mathematics. The focus of the curriculum is on science and technology, of course. The school still teaches the basic education courses prescribed by uh, DepEd for secondary education. However, there are additional subjects in sciences and technology that students should take. Meaning, um, compared to the um, normal curriculum, they have additional subjects. The school envisions to serve as a venue in providing maximum opportunities for science-gifted students to develop spirit of inquiry and creativity. The school is well supported by the local government unit and by the PTA. This school is under the Department of Education. So... Um, if uh, you have friends, relatives in, in NCR and they wish to um, pursue or they are inclined to science, uh, they can go to Quezon City Regional Science High School. So this is a part or a building in Quezon City Regional Science High School. Next, we have Manila Science High School. So there are a lot of science schools in Luzon. The school was established on October 1, 1963 as the Manila Science High School, MSHS. It is the first science high school in the Philippines. The organization and curriculum of the school puts more emphasis on science and mathematics. MSHS aims to produce scientists with souls, meaning not just intelligent students, intelligent people, but also possess good values. In order to do this, humanities, courses, and other electives are included in their curriculum. Students are also encouraged to participate in various extracurricular activities. So uh, they don't just focus on their studies, but they have extracurricular activities. The school administers an entrance exam. The Manila Science High School admission test or the MSAT for students who wish to enroll. So just like any other science high school, um, you cannot enroll right away. Like if you want to be uh, enrolled in that school, you really need to take and pass the entrance exam. Same with uh, the Phil side or the Philippine Science High School. Uh, the MSAT has five parts. Attitude in science, attitude in math, uh, problem-solving test in science, problem-solving test in math, 
and proficiency in English because communication is also important. The school prides itself from producing outstanding alumni and for winning various national competitions. So this is um, a part or a building in Manila Science High School. Next, we have the Central Visayan Institute Foundation. So this is another school in the Visayas. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is in Bohol. So it is the home and pioneer of the prominent school-based innovation known as the Dynamic Learning Program. So the DLP is a synthesis of classical and uh, modem pedagogical theories adapted to foster the highest level of learning, creativity, and productivity. The high or the school takes pride in its research center for theoretical physics, RCPP, established in 1992, which organizes small international workshops to foster the informal but intense exchange of ideas and perspectives on outstanding problems in physics and mathematics. So uh, they are more on research, which is very important in the field of science and mathematics. So this is uh, a part or a picture of one of their buildings in their campus. That's the Central Design Institute Foundation. So yeah, that's it for the first topic about science schools in the Philippines. So if you have questions, clarifications, feel free to ask in the comment section below. Now for the second topic, we proceed with indigenous science and technology in the Philippines. Indigenous meaning uh, the native or uh, the local culture in our country. So indigenous knowledge is embedded in the daily life experiences. Parents and older people served as first teachers because um, before, before the colonizers came to the country, um, our parents or the Filipino parents would serve as the first teacher for their children. Method of teaching in transmitting cultural knowledge in their minds and lessons are intimately woven with the culture and the environment. So um, it's more on uh, good values, life stories of people on their daily life struggles, views about nature, and reflection on their experiences in daily life in stories, poems, and songs. So um, concepts are more personal because um, it is part of the day-to-day -day lives of the people. Some examples of indigenous knowledge that are taught and practiced by the indigenous people are first, Predicting weather conditions and seasons using knowledge in observing animals, behavior, and celestial bodies. I don't know if you have heard this, but um, whenever like people see um, birds migrating, whenever um, they see snakes coming out of the ground, um, according to some people, it has a certain meaning. So by just simply observing uh, animal behavior, people can predict um, that there is something happening in nature. Also, um, I've read um, somewhere online that whenever people um, see dead or fish, uh, by the seashore, that means that there will be an upcoming um, earthquake, but that's not proven, but it's um, how indigenous people or local people um, understand that, that certain phenomenon. Next, we have uh, using herbal medicine. So it's making use of the plants 
that uh, can be seen around us in our environment and in nature. Preserving foods, classifying plants and animals into families and groups based on cultural property. So um, plants are being categorized, also animals based on their properties. Preserving and selecting good seeds for planting using indigenous technology in daily life. So part of uh, native culture is um, uh, selecting good seeds for planting because um, plants are very essential for the day-to-day -day living and also using um, technology in order to plant. Building local irrigation systems to have a source of water. Classifying different types of soil for planting based on cultural properties because we know that not all types of soil can be used to um, or can be used for plants because there is a certain type of soil wherein uh, a certain plant will grow and there are certain types of soil um, that you cannot um, plant on. Producing wines and juices from tropical fruits. So uh, in the Philippines, um, we have our very own coconut wine or um, commonly known as tuba. And keeping the custom of growing plants and vegetables in the yard. So uh, during the pandemic, people have became have yeah became plantitos and plantitas, which is actually good to hear and to know because um, um, time will come that uh, if you will plant uh, fruits, vegetables, you will be able to harvest. Um, next, we have definition of indigenous science. So indigenous science is a part of indigenous knowledge system practiced by different groups of people and early civilizations. So it includes knowledge, expertise, and practices. So according to Pawilin, Indigenous science, uh, these are representations that guide human societies in their innumerable interactions with the natural milieu. Agricultural medicine, naming and explaining natural phenomena and strategies for coping with changing environment. He also explained that indigenous science knowledge has developed diverse structures and contents through the interplay between the society and their environment. So that's um, the definition of indigenous science according to Pawilin. According to Ogawa, so Ogawa claimed that it is collectively lived in and experienced by the people of a given culture. That's how he defined the indigenous science. On the other hand, according to Kahete, indigenous science includes everything from meta metaphysics to philosophy and various practical technologies practiced by indigenous people, both past and present. Another definition, according to uh, Ayakarino, so Ayakarino elaborated Cajete's idea by explaining that science is a part of culture and how science is done largely depends on the cultural practices of the people. So in summary, although they have various and different uh, interpretations of indigenous science, in the end, uh, it can be said that indigenous science is um, a part of the lives of the people and science, indigenous science can be seen in everything that they do. May it be in agriculture, in medicine, it can be seen uh, in almost everything in people's day-to-day -day living. Indigenous beliefs also develop desirable values that are relevant or consistent to scientific attitudes as identified by Johnston. So he named the following attitudes. We have 
motivating attitudes, cooperating attitudes, practical attitudes, and reflective attitudes. So, in general, we have here a table or a diagram. So, indigenous science uses science process skills. So, uh, different skills are being used, developed, and applied. It is guided by community, culture, and values. So, it will depend upon the culture of a certain community and is composed by traditional knowledge. It is based on um, the traditions of the people in that certain community or area. So, to elaborate further, indigenous science uses science process skills such as observing, comparing, classifying, measuring, problem solving, inferring, communicating, and predicting. So these are the different skills that are being used and applied in indigenous science. Indigenous science guided by culture and community values such as the following. Number one, the land is a source of life. It is a precious gift from the creator. So that's one of the beliefs of the people that um, from the land or if we take care of the land, it will give us a lot of bounties. So fruits, vegetables, and um, it is considered as a precious gift from our creator. The earth is reversed as mother earth. It is the origin of their identity as people. So the earth is being considered as a mother because it provides for the need of the people. And without the earth, um, for sure, we will not survive or we will have a hard time surviving. All living and non-living things are interconnected and interdependent with each other. So one of their beliefs is that whatever we do, whatever action that um, we do to others, um, it will have an effect since all of us are connected. So let's say um, that uh, you will cut trees and you will not plant another tree in exchange of that. Later on, as time will went by, that will have negative effects on the people. On the other hand, if we do good things, um, eventually that will also come back to us. Human beings are stewards or trustee of the land and proper care. So being stewards, we should be responsible um, on how we use nature or how we um, use our environment. So um, again, just like what I said, we should be very careful because without uh, Mother Earth, without nature, it will be very hard for people to survive. Next, we have indigenous science is composed of traditional knowledge practiced and valued by the people and communities such as ethnobiology, it's no medicine, indigenous farming methods, and folk astronomy. Indigenous science is important in the development of science and technology in the Philippines. So uh, before uh, the colonizers um, came to the country, so we, al we already had um, our own concepts of science, which is yeah, this one, indigenous science science. So they are considered ancient civilizations. They serve as stepping stone so that um, the science that we have now was developed based on the concepts that they had. It gave birth to the development of science and technology as a field and as a discipline. So without um, those ideas, those concepts that they had before, um, we will not have the science that we have now. Now, according to UNESCO, so they have a declaration on science and the use of scientific knowledge. 
um, they recognized indigenous science as a historical and valuable contribution to science and technology. Now, according to Kuhn, developmental stages of most sciences are characterized by continual competition between a number of distinct views of nature, each partially derived from and all roughly compatible with the dictates of scientific observation and method. According to CBC, indigenous science provides the basis of astronomy, pharmacology, food technology, or metallurgy, which were derived from traditional knowledge and practices. So that's the idea that um, indigenous science was a stepping stone so that we will have the science, the knowledge, and the technology that we have now at the present age and time. So that's the end of my discussion. So that was about uh, science schools in the Philippines and um, indigenous science. So science um, of the local, of the ancient people that helped in the development of the science that we have today. If you have questions, clarifications, feel free to comment your sections in the comment section below, or you may also send your questions in our group chat. Thank you so much for your time and for listening. You take care always. Bye-bye for now.